Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast. Hour one. Hello, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the country. Blue skies where I am. I hope it's gorgeous where you are. The phone number 877-973-7425. If you want to be on the program, and as always, you can text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777 to follow me around social media and the like. Well, well, well. The Democrats have the theory of the campaign already for 2024, and they're moving to lock it in as quickly as possible, and that is abortion. And let's be honest here, as much as I wish it wasn't so in some parts of the country, that probably will be persuasive to some women. But, however, there seems to be a problem. Joe Biden's polling is not going well, and the Democrats more and more openly hoping, just based on current polling lines, that Donald Trump uh, becomes the Republican nominee. Uh, And the reason is because Joe Biden doesn't do well against any of the Republicans other than Ron, uh, other than Joe, uh, Donald Trump. Ah, brain fart there. Let me walk you through this. Democrats are seen in the polling that came out over the weekend, and I should pause here for just a moment and say, we all say the polling in 2022 got it wrong, and that's true. The polling got it wrong. However, we do know the pollsters who came close. What actually happened, we now know in 2022, is that a lot of Republican pollsters skewed the polling. So Trafalgar and uh, several other Republican pollsters got it so wrong, it messed up the polling averages pretty dramatically. When you pull the partisan polls out from the Democrats and the Republicans, and you just focus on the media polls, actually, the media polls got it better than the Republican and the Democratic polling for once. The media polling from, for example, CNN and the New York Times almost dialed it in accurately. So we can't just gutturally say, oh, the polling, why are we talking about the polling? The polling's wrong. Actually, some of the media polling in 2022 turned out, in hindsight, to be pretty spot on, and it was the Republican pollsters who screwed it up for everybody. Uh, Trafalgar, in particular, did a really bad job in 2022. Regardless, we are a nation that still uses polling, and that polling may not have the number right but has done a pretty good job of capturing the trend line. So, for example, in August of 2022, the polling shifted pretty dramatically to the Democrats. And while it narrowed at the end, it captured the trend lines pretty accurately. And the trend lines are always more important in polling anyway, because it does. no pollster is going to get the number exactly right. Well, rarely it'll happen, and it's a fluke. They just happen to get lucky. It's the trend lines that matter, and the trend lines right now are problems for the Democrats. Joe Biden only outperforms Donald Trump. For the Republicans out here, this is something you have to keep in mind. You can say that the polling numbers are bad, but the trend lines have been pretty consistent. Joe Biden does a terrible job against the guy with 100% name ID who everyone already knows named Donald Trump. He doesn't do so well against Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley. Even for that matter, Mike Pence, he does better against Pence than Haley and and, uh, DeSantis and others. But still, there's a clear thread here that has the Democrats in a little bit of alarm. McClatchy polling shows in swing states of Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Georgia, Ron DeSantis beats Joe Biden in ways Donald Trump does not. And then there's this from Politico. This is just the headline. Biden's poll numbers look grim as he preps for re-election bid. He runs neck and neck with Trump and DeSantis in head-to-head matchups at this point. 
Biden has not yet officially announced he's running again next year, though he says he plans to. Polls show his approval ratings hovering in the low 40s, right around the mark where some of his predecessors were denied second terms at this point of their presidencies. According to 538, Biden's average approval rating stands at 43%, only nine points lower than his 52% uh, disapproval rating. That's only one point higher than Trump's approval rating on April 15th, 2019, at the same point in his first term presidency. Determining the extent to which Biden's poor job rating endangers his likely reelection bid is not just an academic exercise. A deep dive into the numbers reveals Biden isn't just struggling with independence and near unanimous disapproval among Republicans. He's soft among Democrats and left-leaning demographic groups. That's right. Biden's 43% approval rating at this juncture of his term puts him roughly even with past presidents who both won, Barack Obama, who had 43, and Reagan at 41, and lost. Trump had 42, Jimmy Carter had 40. But to underscore how things can change between mid-April of this year before the election and next November, both George H.W. Bush and his son George W. Bush sported high approval ratings at this point. George H.W. Bush was just a couple months removed from Operation Desert Storm and had 77% and went on to lose in a three-way race with Bill Clinton and Ross Perot. George H.W. Or George W. Bush had a 75% approval rating and won re-election with just two points higher than John Kerry. That's Politico. And now you got the New York Times today as well. Why Joe Biden has slow walked his way to a 2024 run. He's having closed door meetings. He says he'll be announcing very soon and off the cuff remarks. But behind the scenes, the Biden administration has hit on something. The Republican primary process seems in chaos. Donald Trump is sucking the oxygen out of the room, and according to the Democrats' internal polling, the longer Donald Trump stays in the spotlight, the better it is for Joe Biden. Joe Biden doesn't have to do anything. It doesn't matter. If it's about Trump, it's going to suck the air out of the room. So just sit back and let Trump suck the air out of the room and coast. That's the Biden position. And they think abortion helps them. In fact, if you look at Donald Trump, he's running to the left of Ron DeSantis on abortion, attacking DeSantis for the assigning the six-week abortion law. He's attacking DeSantis for wanting to reform Social Security and Medicare. He's attacking DeSantis for wanting to deal with entitlements. Those are all the positions Joe Biden himself has. Joe Biden thinks that women come to him in the suburbs because of abortion. But there's a problem. Y'all know I say it all the time. It's time to say it again. Events change things. That is a quote attributed to Neville Chamberlain. But it wasn't Neville Chamberlain. It was one of the later um, uh, British prime ministers who, riding high in the polls, a reporter asked him what could throw off his uh, premiership, and he says, events, dear boy, events. Events change things. And the Federal Reserve says we're headed towards a recession. Recessions tend to hurt presidencies. There will be, undoubtedly, there will be a segment of the population more moved on the issue of abortion on both sides and more on the left than the right now. It used to be before Roe v. Wade died that abortion motivated more voters on the right than the left. We're now going to see more voters on the left than the right be motivi motivated by abortion. It's notable the Trump campaign is attacking DeSantis for signing the six-week abortion ban in Florida. It seems to me DeSantis neutralizes the issue by saying, well, what's right for Florida may not be right for Minnesota. What's right for Florida may not be right for your state. This is a state-by-state -state issue. No state should be able to impose its will on another state, and if your state wants more expansive abortion, have at it. He can use federalism. You can't use federalism on the economy. 
You can't use federalism on the economy. The economy impacts everyone broadly. The parts of the country best off right now are in the Southeast. South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, Alabama actually have pretty booming economies right now. California, New York, Illinois, blue states not doing as well. Texas doing great. California, not so much. In fact, the recession appears to be starting early in California. So much for Gavin Newsom pursuing a quasi-presidential bid. I think Gavin Newsom really wants to be vice president. He wants to off Kamala Harris in some way, push her out of the office so he can take it over. That's why he's campaigning so aggressively right now or setting himself up in 2028. The economy is not doing well in California right now. What happened in the tech sector, layoffs there starting to spread throughout that state. Joe Biden has a problem and he knows it. The Democrats know it. There's no immediate urgency for Biden to declare his reelection, says Kate Bedenfield, who just a part of the White House. She says the president has the luxury of being able to decide when he wants to announce. He better do it before a recession comes. There is no one right now on the Democratic side mounting an aggressive bid against Joe Biden. Gavin Newsom appears to be laying the groundwork. Joe Biden, if he serves out a second term, would be 86 years old. Age is becoming an issue. He told Al Roker on NBC News of the White House Easter egg role he intends to run for president. But he's behind even Barack Obama in announcing it. Democratic strategists are starting to see the headwinds build. If we head into the economy at the end of this year, if the Republicans get their act together and get on the same page and don't have the nasty chaos within the Republican primary, it provides a more unified message for the Republicans just as the country is slipping into a recession. And the Democrats are starting to realize this could be a problem. Biden already has low poll numbers. Now, Reagan and Obama had very low poll numbers headed into their reelection. Reagan was able to rebound with a morning in America, 1984. We've saved the country ad. The economy was still weighing him down in 1983. In Barack Obama's term, the economy as well was weighing Barack Obama down. But see, the economy was weighing them down as they got to office. Reagan came into office. You had the recession from Jimmy Carter. You had the interest rate turmoil. Reagan was turning stuff around in 1983, so by 1984, he could say, hey, it's morning in America. More people are going to get married tomorrow. More people are going to go to work. More people have jobs. More people are going to buy a home than in the previous four years because we've rebuilt things. Barack Obama was headed into re-election in 2011, 2012 with the economic recession and the housing crisis from 2008, 2009. And he was putting that behind us so he could rebuild. The problem is that Barack Obama and Ronald Reagan were headed towards re-election, putting economic calamity behind them. Joe Biden is headed to re-election with economic calamity still to come. He's at their polling level with economic calamity still to come. And the Democrats realize this is a problem for Joe Biden. You head into November, December, January, you've got the economy in a recession. And here's the big problem with this recession for the Democrats. Who's it going to hurt the most? Most analysts say the coming recession is going to hurt the rich more than the poor. Why? Because it's going to be a market level recession. Stocks will recede. 401ks will go down. So it is your future retirement that's at stake. That's going to hurt the middle class. They're not going to feel it in their immediate pocketbooks. They're going to see it in their accounts. The rich are going to see it in their accounts. And if layoffs do expand, which actually isn't likely because there's still so much labor demand, but if it does, that will hurt the middle class immediately. But Joe Biden with 42 to 43% popular approval rating in the country right now in the polling average, is about to head into a recession that's going to wallop 401ks, hurt the stock market, hurt the rich, hurt technology companies. He hasn't announced yet. He probably wants to get ahead of it, and the rumor is he will this summer announce before a recession hits. 
But then how does he turn it around, particularly if the Republicans, having exhausted the emotional energy of the voters over Donald Trump, having the entire media build it up as it's Trump's to lose, if Trump isn't the Republican nominee and Republicans offer a fresh face like a governor of South Carolina or Florida, both of whom have compelling economic records in their states, Joe Biden is completely off his message. All he'll have is abortion at a time crime and the economy are the two dominant factors for voters. And I guarantee you, if the Republicans don't have Trump and someone else, they'll have someone with better impulse control and better messaging to combat a president whose approval ratings headed into a recession are fatal usually for a presidency. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. I don't want another protracted conversation about electric vehicles. Uh, We've had a lot of them. But I have real-world experience to share with you. A friend of mine has a Tesla. He had a friend last week who died and was going to drive to the funeral, which is in a rural part of the country. And Tesla has a very good calculator on its website and in its cars that will route you through charging stations. And he realized that even with the Tesla high-speed charging network, it was going to add 70 extra minutes to an already six-plus-hour trip. Uh, He had wanted to drive because when you factor in an hour drive to the airport, an hour waiting at the airport, an hour and a half flight, rental car, and then an hour and a half drive when he got there, it's it's six of one, half dozen of the other. Might as well take his own car. And then when you add 70 extra minutes for charging, he's like, I guess I'm going to fly and rent a car when I get there. It's remarkable. I put that online and the electric vehicle people were all like, well, he's clearly not driving a Tesla. Yes, he is. Well, clearly there's something wrong. Yes, there is. There isn't a supercharging station where he's going. And they're like, oh, he's going to rural America. We don't drive there in our EVs. There's polling out today that shows like 50% of America opposes the switch to electric vehicles. That's pretty decisive. And the Biden administration plowing ahead with it is going to turn a lot of Americans off, and most particularly working-class Americans. They probably need to rethink this, but they can't because he's got to lock down his progressive base, and they're the ones pushing it. Now, y'all, I'm so happy I get to tell you uh, Vision Computers is partnering with me. Whether you are in Connecticut or California, Vision Computers can be your computer person. So the way this came about, my son wants a gaming PC, and I just, I used to be tech support in my house, and I'm not anymore. It's just, it's changed so much from back in the days when I was building computers and programming them and stuff. I used to do computer programming, and I can rely on Vision to get my son a gaming PC. And then the cool thing is, if I ever need uh, tech support with them, they answer the phone. Within about 15 seconds, they answer the phone when you call them. So if you need a computer for your parents but you can't be tech support, you can get Vision Computers to build them one, and they'll maintain it with tech support. They can even remotely patch into your parents' computer, depending on the circumstances, or help them with a printer, get their email set up. Their tech support sets them head and shoulders above everyone else in the business. If you have PC-related issues, give them a call. They're here to help. Even if you didn't purchase a PC from them, you can get their managed service for a low annual fee. they got over 30 years in the business, all sorts of five-star Google reviews. You can trust Vision Computers with your computers. I have started. They're a godsend. Visioncomputers.com or 404-COMPUTE. Call them 404-COMPUTE. See how fast they pick up. You'll be hooked. Hi there. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here nationwide. The phone number is 877-973-7425. I assume you know what indulgences are. I'm going to focus on those for just a moment. In the medieval period... It's the Catholic Church, and I realize if you're Catholic, you will quibble with some of this, but just giving you the basics, the Catholic Church in the medieval period, as they began the expansion of the Vatican and the building of the St. Peter's Basilica we know now, began to give indulgences. And I shouldn't say give, they were selling indulgences. Essentially, you would buy the indulgence and you would get out of trouble with God. You would escape purgatory. It was one of the issues Martin Luther cited in his theses uh, that brought about the Reformation in the 1500s. It is specifically, uh, from his vantage point, seemed to be not biblically based and, and based on corruption. 
indulgences have always been a thing, though, even before uh, the Catholic Church. We, we got the name and the terminology and the history, but going back to ancient times, there have always been indulgences. People, particularly the wealthy, can pay money to avoid obligations everyone else has. You see it in modern times with the environmentalist movement. The wealthy pay for carbon offsets, and then they get to fly their private jet. And when you ask them, why do you want everyone to fly commercial or even get rid of planes, but you get to fly private? They say, well, I've paid the indulgence or I've paid the carbon offset. It's a way for them to virtue signal. Anheuser-Busch has paid its indulgence and now wants a pass. And of all people, Donald Trump Jr., the son of the former president, is urging conservatives now to lay off Bud Light because Anheuser-Busch has given the GOP money. The National Republican Congressional Committee has decided to take down a website attacking Bud Light because Anheuser-Busch gave them a lot of money. They have given more money to the GOP than other beer companies. I mentioned last week, and it needs to be said again, I'm not an Anheuser-Busch drinker. I have in my office fridge Miller Lite, fine with Coors Light, Shinerbach, Yingling. Miller Lite's kind of my go-to. They, in Pride Month, changed their logo to the rainbow flag, as does everyone else. For one month, every corporation in America is gay, and then they're straight again July 1st. It's what they do. Whether you like it or not, it's just part of the pattern and practice now of the um, of corporate corporate America when it comes to Pride Month. Uh, gay consumers have a lot of money. They cater to them. They advertise to them. It's kind of expected, and it doesn't really offend me that they're trying to angle a market, although I would note they don't do it to, to Christian Americans, of course, I mean, how what's your sales pitch going to be, Miller Lite or Anheuser-Busch, to sell to the Baptists? Uh, the invisible can. Your friends at church won't see you buying it. I, I, I don't know. But there's a difference between Miller Lite and Coors, which are now owned by the same company, and these other companies, and Anheuser-Busch. Because only Anheuser-Busch decided to celebrate Dylan Mulvaney, a transgender activist, the same week a transgender activist murdered six Christians in Nashville, and another transgender activist was plotting mass murder in Colorado but was stopped. Nike and Bud Light chose, along with Kamala Harris, to honor Dylan Mulvaney for Dylan Mulvaney claiming to be a woman for 365 days. No other beer company decided to honor a transgender activist the week that a transgender activist murdered six people. Bud Light did that. Late Friday, the CEO of Anheuser-Busch released what is not an apology. It could have been written by chat GPT. It was so generic. Essentially say we didn't mean to intrude on divisive political topics. No, I'm sorry. No, we shouldn't have done it. Nobody's getting fired. And hey, by the way, we give lots of money to the Republicans. You should lay off us. Over to you, Don Jr., who agreed. It's an indulgence. When Fox News covers Dylan Mulvaney, Fox News uses female pronouns for the guy. So many of you are so worried about the left and their culture war. You might want to look to your own team. Anheuser-Busch is now running patriotic ads with Clydesdales. They've never said, I'm sorry. They've never acknowledged why it was a bad idea to do it. They've never fired the head of PR. Instead, they've written a check to Republicans, got Don Jr. to tell people to lay off him, and ran a Clydesdale ad with waving American flags. That's not an apology. That's so we can get by with this and we will do it again. Screw you. That's what Anheuser-Busch is doing. Fox News 
wants you to rally around their flag against Dominion voter systems. They're in settlement talks today in this lawsuit. Fox News wants you to be on their side. I've got a number of friends who have insisted that uh, any lawsuit against Fox News is a breach of the First Amendment, uh, which isn't really true. And Fox News is out there using they, them, and, and she, her pronouns to talk about transgender people who are men. I mean, Fox News has taken the editorial position of the left when it comes to an issue their audience is opposed to. Stop wringing your hands about the left when it's your cultural institutions on the right who are engaged in the culture war on behalf of the left as well. I have seen time and time again so many people on the right get bought off into silence about so many things, particularly culture things. And you know, a lot of the donors don't really care. You know, you've got the, this this donor, he's a Trump donor. He, The New York Times has started this buzz. Oh, I, what's his name? Thomas, what's his name? Pettifer or something, um, who is attacking Ron DeSantis for book burnings and abortion. He was never with DeSantis to begin with. He's been a Trump donor. But the New York Times, of course, ran it. Oh, the donors are starting to break away from DeSantis for his extremist cultural positions. No, this guy has. And what you find with the donor class of the GOP is they are overwhelmingly fiscally conservative and socially liberal. You know, I find this, frankly, in radio. A lot of major radio companies, the ownership doesn't really care for conservative talk, but it makes money, so they leave it alone. And in some cases, after Rush Limbaugh died, decided to go in other ways that might cater to conservatives in their thinking, but really doesn't because they would love to kill it off. I mean, you got Ford deciding to get rid of AM radio in its vehicles. Now, there are a lot of other issues there, but I mean, the, intrinsically, the upper echelons of Ford, they're not exactly conservative. They don't care if you can't get conservative talk radio. They'll pay an indulgence, I'm sure. You will find out they're great Republican donors and Republicans will constantly give them a pass. You shouldn't give people passes just because you get money from them if culturally they are against you. And this is Anheuser-Busch's problem. Anheuser-Busch has seen dramatic decrease in Bud Light sales. We know Anheuser-Busch has seen a dramatic decrease in Bud Light sales. One, because of the anecdotal evidence from shopkeepers and bar owners, and two, from the actual economic data uh, that has been uncovered by reporters. They had a substantial drop-off. There's a little Podunk gas station about an hour from me. There's a lake, uh, Lake Juliet, and it is, it's, so there are two lakes, Lake Oconee and Lake Juliet. The Oconee flows into Juliet here in Georgia. Got listeners out there. Lake Oconee is, is very wealthy. They have a Ritz-Carlton. It flows into Lake Juliet. On the south side of that lake, uh, Lake Juliet, it, it's poor houses. At some point, they're ripe for buy and tear down and building mansions, but they're not there. They've got a lot of people with a lot of cottages and stuff out there, middle-class people who are able to buy lake houses. And there's this podunk little grocery store out there. It's a mom-and-pop shop. You can get boiled peanuts and Bud Light on your way to go fishing in your bass boat. They haven't sold Bud Light since this happened. A buddy of mine stopped there. The guy was telling me that they have a literal, like, they've built a mountain with the unsold cases of Bud Light and are about to mark them down and lose money on the sale. The number of mom and pop shops who are going to be economically uh, hurt because of what Bud Light did isn't a story told. They've already bought the inventory and now they can't sell it. All because Bud Light hired a Harvard grad who decided she had utter contempt for their core audience. And so she decided to smear that audience as fratty and redneck and see if Bud Light would be embraced by the trans audience. And I, I got to just think, the trans community is probably not out rushing to buy Bud Light. Probably not. So she dumped on a core consumer market for Bud Light for a market that's probably not going to go buy Bud Light anyway. And Anheuser-Busch, instead of apologizing, wrote a check to Republicans and got Don Jr. to come out and say, hey, stop boycotting Bud Light. They're with us. If they're with us, they would have never done this. 
If they're with us, this would not have happened. If they're with us, she's fired, and she's not. She still has her job. Companies think they can pay indulgences. We see this with with the the race movement in America. Think of all of the companies over all of the years who Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton would come in for a shakedown. They'd pay an indulgence and go about their business as if nothing ever happened. Corporations are trained to write checks to get out of problems. Walmart does this. You know, Walmart was one of the chief pushers in the country for Obamacare. Walmart wanted to offload its economic health care costs on the federal government and so pushed hard for Obamacare and got its way. The Washington Free Beacon shows the company is now pushing to inject diversity, equity, and inclusion in schools in Arkansas. In January 2020, Walmart approached public school administrators in Bentonville, Arkansas, about hosting diversity training sessions for the district. We want people to feel welcomed, comfortable, and safe to live here. Northwest Arkansas, Candace Jones, Walmart's head of diversity, emailed district leaders. To that end, the company was offering to arrange teacher training sessions with a North Carolina-based consultancy known as the Racial Equity Institute, a group devoted to creating racially equitable organizations and systems. By August, teachers were learning that perfectionism is white supremacy and that all our systems, institutions, and outcomes emanate from the racial hierarchy on which the United States was built. Walmart was funding this. They learned that systematic inequality is trauma, and there are such things as microaggressions and intersectionality. Walmart funded this. Walmart gives lots of money to Republicans. Walmart has a history of thinking it can pay indulgences, and in paying the indulgences, uh, do whatever it wants and get a pass from Republicans. And by and large, it's been able to do that. By and large, it has been able to take a pass and get away with expanding Obamacare and pushing uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion projects. It just gives money to the GOP, and the GOP turns and looks away. The question is, are you for sale? Are your values for sale? Anheuser-Busch thinks your values are for sale. Don Jr. apparently does too. The NRCC apparently does too. They think they can just make it all disappear, memory hold it, and go back to drinking Bud Light. Uh, Bud Light decided to celebrate a transgender activist the week a transgender activist murdered six people in Nashville. How much money should they pay for you to go back to liking the company? That's the question here. They think you are expendable and expensable. And there are a lot of Republicans who think so as well. When you are hand-wringing about the cultural downturn of this country, you just remember it was your institutions and the people you support who were involved with it as well from Don Jr. to Walmart to Bud Light to Fox News choosing to use female pronouns to talk about a guy just because he's declared himself a woman. It's not just the institutions of the left advancing left-wing values. It's got a lot of people on the right who are willing to do it for money, and you should pay attention to who it is who's doing it. Now, you should also pay attention to what's going on in the economy right now because it's still topsy-turvy. The stock market has been going up and then it goes down. you got all the world events out there. Advantage Gold might be able to help you. 800-450-2566 is their number. With raging inflation and the stock market and major geopolitical turmoil, you probably are a little bit concerned about what's happening with your portfolio. Advantage Gold can help you learn how to use gold, silver, and other precious metals for your 401k, your IRA, even your general investing strategies. They're TrustLink's number one highest rated gold company seven years in a row. Got the best prices and the best staff, and they'll give you a free gold IRA investment kit to tell you what you need to know. Call them, 800-450-2566. That's 800-450-2566. Let Advantage Gold answer your questions. That's the only gimmick they have. It's no gimmick. They just tell you what you need to know, make you the expert so you can do it yourself, and they will work with you to make sure you have access to the precious metals you want and make sure you're doing it in the right way so you don't get tripped up by IRS investment rules. 800-450-2566 is the number, 800-450-2566. Welcome. Don't forget to sign up for the email. I actually wrote about the indulgence issue this morning. You can text DATA to 33777. 
All right, to the phones we go. Lewis, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Yeah, Eric, I think these corporations, they don't, they don't understand that people don't want politics in their coffee. They don't want politics in their beer. I certainly don't want politics in my barbecue. And, you know, Bill Clinton tried to throw this in there. He was going to save gonorrhea by, by raising the tax on beer. I mean, <laughs> corporations need to realize, get out of our lives. We have enough politics on the news as it is. I mean, it just ruins everything. Yeah, it does. Look, I, you know, there's this movement out there to uh, I'm going to I'm going to find a right wing beer. I don't want a right wing beer. I don't want a left wing. beer. I just want a beer that tastes like beer. I don't want it to taste like papaya or, or, or left wing politics. Just give me a beer. And that's that's the problem here is so many people in corporate America are so woke and wokeism is a religion and they want to weave their religion into it. And on the other side of it, there's this growing group of people on the right who are as unchurched as the left, even if they know where the church is, they don't go anymore. And they've made politics their religion as well. And they want everything on their side. I just, I can we keep the politics out of beer and food? Uh, no, apparently not. That This is why I think it's, it's worth taking a stand on this sort of issue, to discourage corporations from weaving their politics left or right into things that should be able to unite all Americans. Every American should be able to unite behind a beer, whether you drink one or not, but you can't when Bud Light's out there doing this sort of nonsense. Uh, and I don't want your right-wing branded beer. Just give me a beer without the politics, please. Not everything in life is political or should be political. And both sides trying to make everything political alienate large swaths of Americans who are open to voting for you, but not when you are obsessed about the political minutia they couldn't care about. You know, most people just want to live a happy life and be left alone, not not have your politics in their face. It's notable that Anheuser-Busch's response is to trot out its old 9-11 Clydesdale ads and try to guilt you into coming back without ever having to say sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all know I'm not huge on boycotts. I don't like Bud Light anyway. But I, it's offensive to me that they did this, and now instead of saying we screwed up, we're firing the PR gal, they're saying, hey, if you don't drink us, you're not American because we're Clydesdales and American flags and, and heroes of 9-11. No, you are not. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.